So there are two clear signs that a chicken it becomes broody. So I'm gonna show you. This is the next box. Okay. Now you see there's a chicken there. This is cotton bottom. Now if she doesn't move from her box, even to go eat or anything, and she spends a lot of time in there, that's unusually the first sign. Second sign is when they do they fluff up when you get to get when you get close to them. Watch. She's fine. See? You see the back of the feathers? How they stand up? Those are all clear signs that she has become broody. Here are the eggs. I got one dozen fertilized quail eggs. Okay, so this is what a quail egg looks like. It's a lot smaller than a regular egg, even the English game hens. So they last the same amount of time as regular chicken eggs. So in 21 days, we'll see if we got some or not. All right. I know, I know. Can you see? see what you got there. Oh, stop it. Good job, Miss Cotton Bottom. You're such a good mama. One thing that I am giving a try to are the no crow collars. I do have three roosters and all three of them make a lot of noise in the morning especially. But I got these uh, no crow collars that's supposed to help them, prevent them from crowing too loud. So Gaston has one and we have actually named the other one Edgar for Edgar Allan Poe since he's got the big feather in the back. Looks a little funny, but it's basically a collar that goes around their neck that keeps their little windpipe from filling up too much to make the crow the crow. They can still crow, it's just not as loud. And it just makes it uncomfortable for them to actually crow, so it kind of like discourages them. Um, <laughs> it looks a little funny because it looks like they've got collars on. That is Gaston, and you can see the little white collar. It's the no crow collar. It looks worse than it actually is, to tell you the truth. It's really not tight. I had can stick a finger, two fingers in there, and it prevents him from crowing. But it doesn't prevent him from crowing because he's still pretty loud in the morning. There you go, see? type of day that you want to take full advantage of and come and clean your yard, your garden. Now, when you plant a garden, you want to kind of have an idea of what your plant is going to look like so you don't go and pull it out thinking it's grass or weed. Oh, you see, this is grass. This is weed right here, right? Pull this out. This is grass. This 
that's an onion that we planted. Being able to tell the difference between which is which is very helpful and it won't make you destroy the things you've worked so hard for so far. I have always felt, I have always felt that doing gardening and having a garden is like a love-hate relationship with nature. You love nature, you, you want to see plants grow and stuff, but at the same time, you don't want to see specific plants grow. So there's some you do, some you don't. And when it comes to nature, nature wants to grow. So it's a love-hate because no matter how hard you try, weeding is a never-ending process. But in the end, it's, a, it's worth it. I have actually come, went to a store and I found cabbage, broccoli, and, and uh, cauliflower. So I decided to buy four of each, except for the cauliflower, there was only three of them. I decided to buy those because I like that they're already started. Um, I do have seeds for all three of those, and I will be planting those towards the end of the season because they do take a very long time to grow out into broccoli and cauliflower and cabbages. <laughs> So I like to get starter ones at the beginning of the year and the ones that I planted and started from seeds, I plant them at the end of the year when it's getting cold. So broccoli and cauliflower as well as cabbage, they like the cool weather, not the hot, hot weather. The hot, hot weather will get them to seed and we don't want that to happen. So this is the plan. We're gonna have cucumber here, cucumber here. In the middle, there's gonna be broccoli and cauliflower. We're gonna plant these, and we're also gonna plant the cabbages over there. So we're gonna take this out. Remember, they are freshly watered, so it tends to hold together very nicely. And you're gonna just, you want to break it up a little bit at the bottom just so it can help it spread out. And then you push down. And there you go, there's number one.
and cauliflower and broccoli and the cabbage has been planted. So now we gotta put some seeds down. Four different kinds of carrot, three, uh, five different kinds of carrots. We've got the Dan Vendors, Dan Danvers 126. We got the black carrots that we got excited about, or I got excited about. Atomic red carrots, little fingers which don't take up too much space, and as well as regular carrots. We're gonna make little rows like this. Carrot seeds are very, very small. They're very hard to put in one at a time. So what I usually do is just spread them out in the one row. Well, another thing that we should plant is the beets and the radishes, but beets and radishes, they take a lot shorter time to actually grow and get harvested. So I have more time. Right now, uh, what I'm really looking forward to is planting our little cornfield over there, which was nicely tilled yesterday by my neighbor. It was a lot easier than the way I was doing it. <laughs> So it's nicely tilled, I just need to let it dry a little bit. Then we're gonna make rows and put in the seeds. So I'm looking forward to that. So I originally hung up these pots with a little pulley system so that it, when I pull one, the opposite pot will go up and when I pull that one down, this the one that I pulled before will go up. It's just a pulley system. One goes up, the other one goes down. Now, one of the ropes broke last year. It came off and it, it let loose, so you see the branch right there. So what I'm going to do is, I had tied some hooks, a hook up there, see if you can see it, up there. I tied a hook, yeah, right there, uh, right there, and I tied the string to the tree. Now, I'm going to try and attempt to fix this because the more leaves that the tree has, the harder it is to throw it because I literally have to throw the rope over the branches in order for it to work. So it's a lot easier if I do this now before it gets too many leaves then later because the leaves get in the way so join me as i'm trying try to fix my hanging pots for the year flowers in them or at least hook up my my boston fern from inside out here i like doing boston ferns out here because i think it looks nice but i also like flowers like i really every year i try to do at least one or two pots full of flowers same thing this year is going to happen
All right, guys, so I'm done. I have all kinds of baskets and strings ready for hanging baskets. Two little hook things there and there, and they have two strings to go down in a little pulley system. So that's gonna be cool. You could just be like, let there be fire. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we know that spring is here or summer is here. Ha <laughs> ha